Hey guys, Balkan Architect here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about D5 Render and how to use it in collaboration with Revit. Uh, so, if you don't know, D5 Render is a rendering software uh, that can be used with numerous different 3D modeling software, and it's well for as the name would imply, rendering. So it allows you to take uh, your model and it can be a relatively simple model. And then inside of D5, you can add the surroundings, you can add additional elements such as uh, vegetation, planting, you can add people, cars, dynamic objects, which means animated objects, which would be people that actually walk around and animals that walk around and cars that drive and so on. Uh, you can set up the materials and you can take something that's a relatively boring, unimpressive model and you can turn it pretty damn realistic in a really, really quick uh, time. So uh, here on their website, this is the D5 Render uh, website, you can learn more about it. I'm going to be leaving a link for it uh, just down in the description of this video below and also in the cards above. Uh, now, uh, first, I would just like to go over specification for a second. So uh, it's going to be uh, running on your GPU. So it's a GPU based tool. Uh, the graphic card uh, should be NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 uh, six gigabyte or higher uh, and you can visit this page and you can just see uh, what are kind of what's the spe specification and uh, what's the performance going to be depending on your uh, on your graphics card and your setup and uh, now the most impressive thing about uh, the 5 render is this here pricing. So if you go to pricing, you can see that we have this community free option. So if you go here to free download, you can just download it for free. So it's actually a completely free uh, real-time rendering software. It's free for everybody. So not only students. So if you're not a student, you can get it for free. It is obviously limited uh, in a few regards. So for example, you don't get the cloud-based asset library. Uh, you don't get uh, exclusive premium support and so on. But you get quite a, a bit of features and you get a really powerful rendering engine completely for free. Of course, there is a uh, pro version, which is only $360 a year. So compared to competition, this is actually uh, this is actually quite uh, quite low uh, when you just compare it to other rendering real time rendering software that's on the market. So this is really, really impressive. Uh, and of course, uh, here I just kind of uh, wanted to show you some of the and the possibilities here on their website, you can see all of this is, has been done inside of D5 Render and it's it's, it's just completely realistic, it's, it's beautiful. So uh, I, I think it's a really, really powerful software and today we're just going to be exploring uh, how to use it and uh, how to use it with, uh, with Revit. Uh, so speaking of Revit here, when you go to download it, you will see that you can download converters for SketchUp, 3ds Max, Rhino, uh, Archicad, Revit and Blender. So you can use it kind of in collaboration with all of the, uh, the software. So obviously I'm going to be using Revit Revit because this is a Revit channel, but you can use it for any one of these for getting your uh, 3D models. Uh, also, one really important thing before we get started, this video is sponsored by D5 uh, Render, so I just want to uh, mention that. And I'm just going to be showing you the whole workflow and uh, how, how to use it if you're getting it for the very first time. Okay, so uh, we're going to be using this model uh, in order to uh, kind of uh, do our testing inside of D5 render. Uh, now to get this model into D5, we're going to be using a converter. Uh, now what's really good about this converter is once you install it, it's going to appear here on the ribbon uh, in Revit. Here we go, D5. And then when you click start here, it's automatically going to start D5 for you. So you don't have to start both D5 and Revit. You start off Revit first and then you well start D5 from Revit, uh, which I think it's a it's a good kind of uh, way of handling that. 
Uh, now, once you start uh, or once you start converting your model into D5 render, you're going to get this message where it's going to ask you, uh, would you like to create a new uh, file, a new D5 render file for this? or do you want to select an existing file? So if you're like continuing working on an existing project, which you've already kind of started, then you would select the file. Now in this case, uh, because this, I'm opening this for the first time, I'm just going to click OK, and that's going to start D5 render for me. Uh, and here we are, uh, well, there. And as you can see, it looks really, really good. You can see just the quality, just when you load this in out of the box, it looks so, so good. Uh, okay, so uh, once we have uh, uh, this uh, model now inside of D5 uh, render, let's first perhaps go over the interface and just uh, where's what here uh, inside of D5. So uh, here on the left side, uh, on the bottom here, we have objects or assets that we have uh, entered here in this case as you can see this is our uh, modern house project above that we have a scene list so this is the the list of all of the scenes so all of the different angles you decide to take uh, for this uh, building Above that, we have our menu. Uh, next to the menu, we have our assets. This is where we can uh, where we can kind of search for uh, all of the all of the assets that we might want to use, either the materials or models or particles and so on. So we're going to be getting into this a bit later on. Uh, next, above here, we have some kind of quick tools for adding lights, for adding paths. So this is both for characters and vehicles. Then we have some tools for drawing vegetation and also we have uh, a tool for adding particles uh, moving forward uh, then here again on this this kind of top bar uh, we have uh, our image settings uh, video as well as render queue uh, now render queue basically means uh, when you have multiple images selected so multiple renders selected and you want to export them you don't have to click kind of after each one like you do in Revit where you have to kind of render one of them and then set up the second one to render and so on uh, here you can set them all up and then just let them all render and then you can go sleep because that's probably uh, what you want to do after a long day of working. Uh, anyways, here uh, on, on this bar, we have first the environment settings. So this is well, basically the environment, so kind of the surroundings, uh, and uh, you have the uh, geo and sky, or you have HDRI, and again, we're going to be talking about this more later on. We also have some weather settings down here, uh, and then here we have some uh, effects for uh, post-processing, uh, lots, and so on. Uh, now also uh, here in our kind of main screen for the model we have some additional tools here as you can see for uh, moving a color picker camera uh, tools uh, display settings and just uh, navigation and so on so uh, that's kind of the basic interface uh, it's very intuitive that's what you really like about this so you're going to find out that as, as you start working with it it's really easy to find where's what on uh, on your screen uh, now let's quickly go over navigation. So for navigation, what you'll see is that it's really similar to Revit. And if you've worked with Revit, you probably already know how to navigate. It's very kind of self-explanatory. So you can hold your mouse wheel to kind of orbit around, or you can use the right click for that. You scroll to zoom in and out. Uh, so that's kind of pretty basic. Uh, now also something that you have as an option as this that I've shown you here that we have this navigation settings, it can be either orbit, which is what we have right now where we're kind of orbiting around our model. And that's what we're using for navigation. So just kind of zooming in, zooming out and orbiting around. Uh, but what you can also use is here you have the fly mode. So the fly mode is uh, kind of similar to kind of walking around kind of like a video game mode, where now if you hold the right key, uh, or the, the scroll wheel, you can kind of or look around and then if you use the W and S keys uh, you can move front uh, front and back and A and D to move left and right and then you can kind of walk around your model which is 
also really useful. It kind of turns into a game and you're kind of flying around or walking around your model. Uh, also, you can use the Q and E keys to move up and down. So you can kind of change your elevation uh, by using those. So it's pretty kind of self-explanatory, pretty straightforward, but it's a really good way to visualize uh, your model and just kind of uh, look around your model and see what's going on. So those are kind of the, the main two approaches where you have the, the fly mode or orbit. Uh, in addition here for the fly mode, it, you can speed it up. So now when you can go forwards and backwards, as you can see, it goes really fast. So that's uh, one option that we have there to kind of speed it up. This is basically controlling our elevation relative kind of to the ground level uh, in the, uh, of this model. And then also here we have camera rotation, which, which is cool, <laughs> yes. Uh, so anyways, let's turn this to zero. There we go. Okay, so there we go. That's kind of navigation, very simple, pretty straightforward, and it does get the job done and it makes it really easy to, to use. Okay, now we're going to be setting up some uh, scenes. So you have the ability to, uh, to create your scenes or views and they get stored here. So let's just set up kind of a nice angle. So let's say you want to have like a good angle like this uh, for uh, this building. And let's say I want to save this scene or this angle. I can just go here to create new scene and just click there and it's going to save that scene here. So now if I move around wherever I go, I can always click back on this scene and it's going to navigate back to that. Obviously you can make more of them because usually for your projects you're going to have uh, more scenes. So I can just go like this, kind of orbit around, look around like that. Yeah, perhaps this is a good angle. And let's say I want to save this one as well. Uh, you don't really get that button anymore. You only get it here in the middle, uh, only uh, when you set up the first scene. And then after that, you just go here to add a scene. So that's basically kind of a secondary place to click. And then you can just uh, toggle between these two here. And obviously you can have many, many more scenes. Uh, now let's move forward and let's now start making some adjustments to the environment. So let's move to scene number one. Uh, and as I've shown you, you have two options. You have this geo and sky, and then you have HDRI. So geo and sky basically allows you to pick out uh, which time of day it is. Uh, and then uh, you can set up the north offset as well. So basically setting up the, your project north, uh, if you haven't done this in the Revit, but you should probably do this in Revit. Uh, but if you didn't, you can you can do that here. Uh, also below, we have some weather settings like the, the clouds and how many clouds you want. So you can have it really cloudy, or you can have no clouds. Also, you can set up the speed of the clouds, which is quite cool and the direction of the clouds. So if you want to specify that, by all means, you can. Uh, next, we have fog. So you can add fog and then you can customize that and uh, you can make it really foggy if you want. And we have course settings for that and then finally we have the wind uh, and we have the strength and direction now wind doesn't really make sense unless you have something to be kind of moving in the wind and perhaps when we add some trees the the the, the, the wind parameters might make a bit more sense uh, now also as I said we have HDRI so what is this well this basically kind of wraps your um, uh, wraps your scene into an image. In this case, this is this early morning image. Now, let me actually demonstrate that on scene two. So what I'm going to do now is go back here to my scene one and click here on update scene. And what it's going to do, it's basically going to update the uh, environment settings that I've made. So it's going to save those. And then when I move to my scene two, you will see that it has those previous settings. So scene one has one environment settings and then scene two has a uh, another uh, set of environment settings. Now, I really like this because you might want to use different scenes to not only illustrate different angles uh, of viewing your building or your project, but also uh, you can demonstrate what that building will look like in different times of day, different uh, 
different dates throughout the year, perhaps in the summer or in the winter, it's going to be different. So you can actually set that up through scenes, you can have different environment settings. So as I said, this HDRI, it wraps your project into an image. Now in this case, we have this early morning image and it's, as you can see, it's gonna bleak. But if I go to evening glow, it's going to be kind of pinkish. And not only does it apply that image around the model, but also what it does is it kind of illuminates the uh, color of of the of the the sky image onto the model. Uh, this is something you see in real life. You know when you're perhaps it's a sunset and it's kind of that orangey color. If you look at the building, it's going to be orangey from from the color of the sky same thing applies here. So you can actually use the, these images to kind of customize everything and make it look exactly how you want it to look. Uh, now also here below we have the option to set up the, the light. So how, how much light we have, we can rotate that image around if we want. So you can rotate it around. You can set up the color temperature, make it warmer or colder. Actually, I like it a bit warmer here. Uh, you can turn on the sun. Uh, you can set up the intensity of the sun, sun disk radius, color temperature. So a lot of uh, settings for that. And then also for the direction, you can either follow HDRI image or you can customize that uh, by adding in uh, angles basically for the altitude and azimuth of the, of the sun. So that's cool as well. And then finally, we have the weather. Uh, we don't have the clouds because they're already part of the image, but we do have the fog and wind options, which we can set up here as well. And then just make sure not to forget to update that scene too. So now that is saved. And if I go to scene one, we have this kind of uh, regular bluish sky with moving clouds. And if we go to scene two, we have that pinkish sky and we have kind of a different effect. And not only, as you said, viewing the buildings for building from different angles, but also uh, viewing it through different times of day or uh, dates of the year. Uh, now let's talk about materials for a second. So materials out of Revit are usually terrible. So uh, luckily here we do have the ability to change them for some really high quality materials. Here we actually get the uh, PBR uh, materials included, which is really cool. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of zoom into the house and let's say that I don't like this flooring, does it look good? And let's say I want to change that. So what they can do here is go to assets and then here I can search for materials. So I just go here to material and then as you can see I have many different materials to choose from. Uh, now what I'm going to do is just search for wood because that's something I need and then I can just find uh, a nice material to use. So I don't know, let's see, I think I have nice Okay, we have this nice uh, rosewood or something like that. Black. Okay, I really like this black wood. I like the, the color and the texturing. So let's say this, I want to use this. So I can just select this. I've already have it loaded in. So I'm just going to place it here. Click basically on which kind of object I want to place that material. And as you can see in this case, it basically places that material both on uh, top and bottom because that was one specific material in Revit. So basically it applies this wherever that material shows up. So uh, just something you want to keep in mind if you, uh, if you have a tendency to use one material for everything, it can mess things up really quickly. Uh, so uh, when you're in Revit, make sure you have different materials set up uh, so you don't uh, run into problems here in D5 render. Uh, also, we can customize these materials, obviously. So if I just select the, the material, I can come in here in the inspector. And as, as you can see here, I can uh, further now play around with this uh, uh, with this material. So here is the base color map. And then I can uh, play around with numerous different settings like the normal, the specular, roughness, metallic. Uh, and also here we have the uh, a, immensive, uh, which is an option where your materials can basically glow or uh, cast light on uh, other objects, which is quite cool as well. 
obviously for for uh, a wood material that doesn't make sense but you, you can do that as well uh, and then here we have the uh, UV uh, parameters so if you want to make this smaller or larger you can set that up here you can even stretch it if you unlink that you can uh, offset that material if you need and so on so uh, you have that ability as well and also you can rotate that so let's say in this case I actually want it at 90 degrees so I can I can do that and there we go that's how you set up materials it's fairly simple and straightforward uh, now one thing that I want to do uh, now is to uh, add some additional assets add uh, a, a bit more entourage or environment around my model but before that uh, let's do the most important thing that I probably should have done in the beginning and that's go here uh, go to file and save this file so I'm just going to save it as and then I can save it on my desktop or wherever and let's call this one the uh, d5 render test okay so make sure to save your project from time to time I think that's usually a good idea uh, and now we can just kind of take, take, take a look at different angles and now let's take a look at the environment or the surroundings so if I go back here to assets uh, you will see that under uh, model here we have numerous different trees items like that so you can just come in here and you can download and place different trees so if I click here on this one for example it's going to download that tree and now if I select it I can just place it wherever I want on my model so you can just come in here one one tree here one there one here I can download a different tree so let's download this one place a few of those here and there so you can really easily add uh, quite a bit of uh, elements here to your model now if I just hit the escape key uh, and let's zoom in and let's select one of these trees you can obviously move them around at any point oops I think I'm rotating this but yeah as you can see you can move it around you can move it up or down so uh, you can do they position that well eh, it's well enough so you can always play around with the uh, with the position of the trees later on uh, now one more thing that they find really important when it comes to uh, rendering is the grass so from Revit grass tends to be really terrible as well so for the grass uh, luckily we can change that as well so what we have here is uh, this draw vegetation and then we have this scatter tool so if I just click on that scatter tool this is basically how it looks like so you can set up the radius like this uh, and then you can set up different elements here so I'm going to uncheck that tree because I don't want that uh, and then I can go and search for grass so let's see do we have some grass here you have to hit enter wait for a few moments there we go so we do have some grass here so I'm just going to check uh, a few of these so perhaps like this and then here you can set up the density uh, you can set up the size uh, random size uh, so make it randomize it a little bit but like this you can see you can paint your grass really quickly and it does look really good especially if you select multiple grass types it's going to look a bit more natural and then you can just place uh, grass like that obviously you can erase that so let's just make this a bit smaller so if you want less grass you can erase that grass uh, now this is fairly cool uh, but let's say you have uh, a lot of grass and you don't perhaps want to go through the trouble of placing it like this with a brush uh, and you just want to apply it on a material so you want to select the surface and then just apply grass over that that is possible as well so if I just escape out of this hit the escape key a few times uh, now uh, what I can do is I can select this basically the surface uh, just like that and then uh, when I select that surface uh, here in the kind of material settings here we have the material template uh, currently set to custom but if I scroll down as you can see you can make it a variety of things so you have transparent water car paint displacement cloth and so on but on the bottom here this one is the most interesting to me at least at this point and that is grass so if I just select that grass it's going to generate grass and that looks really good 
Uh, also down here you have this random UV which can kind of randomize it a little bit I guess. Uh, also you can customize the, the color, you can just go with the base color map and uh, you can use all of the additional settings here to try to kind of play around with the, kind of the, the material. Uh, of that grass uh, but also you can just go here to base color uh, and then you can select the color and set it up and you can get different kind of color of grass so uh, if you want to customize that grass color you can do that as well so as you can see it doesn't uh, at least in my opinion it doesn't look good as this grass here which we have placed using the, the scatter tool uh, but it really depends on how close you are going to be to that grass and uh, how, how how detailed you need it to be. But in this case, yeah, let me go back to that angle. I think this looks really, really good, just like this, out of the box. So uh, you can just apply that as a material. Now let's take a look at a different project. Uh, I want to use this to show you a couple of additional features. Uh, so the first one uh, has to do with cars and it's the path uh, tool. So if I click here, you can see we have a character path and a vehicle path. So you can just create a path and then assign vehicles or characters to walk or drive on that path. So in this case, let's say I want to use this road and I want to add some vehicles, I want to animate that, I want to see some moving vehicles. So that can be done with this path tool. So basically just click here on the path tool, you click on vehicle, and then it's going to bring up your uh, render assets uh, or D5 render assets. And then here you have all of the vehicles and now you can just simply click uh, on the vehicles you want to use. So for example, let's say I want to use this one, I download that one, select that one let's say I want to use this one and for example this one so let's download that one as well as you can see it's pretty quick to download even complicated vehicles like this anyways uh, once we have this now I can perhaps just move this out of the way and then let's place the path so I'm just going to click here in the center of the road at the back and stretch it out all the way forward up to the beginning of the path or beginning of the road. So once I click there, it's going to place all of those cars. I can hit the escape key uh, and now I can, oops, uh, let's undo that. So file undo, okay. And, and now I can select that path and, oops, I, I guess it didn't select the, the models. So let me just go back here. Uh, yeah, I wanna select this one, add that one. I wanna add this one, oops. Yeah, just like that so I said this one as well okay so I can add uh, all of these additional vehicles now to the path and as you can see now we have multiple different vehicles moving along here uh, also you can set up the density so you can have multiple cars you can have less cars I usually like less density just because it looks better uh, and also I want dual uh, lanes uh, and I want to make the width a bit smaller as you can see it feels like they're kind of driving a little bit on the sidewalk so I don't like that so let's change the width to uh, something smaller like usually it's three meters in my country but yeah we can go with 3.2 that seems to work just fine and there you go. Uh, also, you can change the direction, so left hand, right hand drive, you can change the, the speed so you can make them really quick. There we go. But usually I want to go it slower and be less dense. That's usually what, what I like to see with these uh, moving vehicles. So there you go. That's how you set up uh, paths for uh, placing vehicles or characters on your model. Now one more thing that I want to show you with this model is how to add lights. So I'm just going to zoom in here uh, to this area and then in order to place lights uh, it's usually a good idea to set uh, the time of day to something just a bit darker. Uh, and now let's start adding some, uh, some lights. So what you can do is you can go here to the add lights button on top, 
you can click there and then as you can see we have uh, multiple different options we have point lights spotlights strip lights uh, and uh, rectangular lighting so I'm just going to be using a spotlight and let's just place one here for example and then what I'm going to do uh, is make some adjustments so for your lighting uh, here in the inspector uh, tab uh, we have this is the the spotlight that's being used and then here we have its kind of basic settings in terms of uh, location and rotation but then we have properties uh, where we can choose a different IES file so this is like a uh, basically the way that lighting spreads this is what lighting experts uh, use to determine how light will spread from a light source uh, next we have the intensity so if you want to make it brighter less bright you can kind of control that uh, through this parameter uh, we have the cone angle which is well this this whole cone that as you can see it changes uh, next we have the uh, this radius uh, next we have the uh, light source radius which we can change as well I'm just going to leave it at 5 and then we have the uh, option to kind of have it uh, visible in reflection. And finally here below, we have the option to set up the temperature if you want to have this light colder or warmer or kind of orangish or bluish, uh, you can set that up here. I usually like my lighting just a little bit warmer. Okay, so once you have the first light set, uh, you can go uh, back here to the inspector on top. You have the option to duplicate that and then you can uh, set multiple once so I can set one for example here uh, I can duplicate that as well set one here and let's yeah let's set them up here on the balconies as well let's see perhaps one more here and there we go now we have uh, lighting for this kind of a night scene uh, and then you can uh, go back to the environment and make it completely dark and then you would see what this building would look like in dark now one more thing that I would like to show you and that is uh, how to update the model so when you're working uh, on your model like this uh, in D5, uh, you might realize that there's a, there's a change that you want to make to the actual model itself. So in order to make that change, what you can do is you can just go back into Revit. And then here, let's say that I, I just realized that this railing, I don't want this railing type to be used. So I'm just going to select this railing, hold the control key, select this railing as well. And then instead of this kind of glass railing, let's say I want to have a pipe railing like this. So once I make any changes to the model, I can go here to the D5 and I can synchronize that model. So it's just going to update that model in D5. And then when we go back here, as you can see, that railing has now been changed. So you have the ability to make any quick updates to the model with ease uh, by using that sync button in Revit. Okay, now we're going to be coming back to our original project that we've started with. And uh, just one thing I want to show you now how to uh, load this project once you already have a D5 uh, render file. Uh, how can you get to that uh, project file from Revit? So again, we go to the D5 render tab. Uh, we go to start D5. Uh, it's going to bring up that uh, menu uh, where we uh, either click OK or we specify the file. So in this case, we're just going to be specifying that file. Uh, so here, as you can see, it, it says OK if we want to start a new file, but if we have an existing file, we can just specify it here. This is the one, hit open, uh, there seems to be an update, which I'm going to do later. So anyways, uh, here, as you can see, it's uh, loading. And here we are, we're uh, now back. So now if I orbit around a little bit, you will see that they have made some uh, modifications to this file. So I have added uh, a lot more vegetation, some trees, I've added a, a person here. And something that I really like about these people, you can see that he's actually moving, which is quite cool. It's actually like a, like an animated model. And of course you can add walking models and so on. Here I've added just a, a truck there. Uh, I've added some furniture here on the outside. 
outside, some vegetation and so on. Here we have another lady just standing around, uh, just to make this a little bit more interesting. Uh, now keep in mind, it only took me like 15-20 minutes to do this, and uh, I'm an absolute beginner when it comes to D5 render, so uh, with a little bit of practice, uh, I think this can be done really quickly, and of course you can get even more kind of amazing results. Here you can see some uh, birds that they've added, which is really cool. They just fly around. So if you want to make a video, uh, they can kind of fly through your uh, through your kind of design, which is really cool. So now to go back to our scenes that we have created. Remember we have this scene here, and then we have uh, this scene as well. Uh, we can make some modifications in terms of effects. So here you can see we have a different effect. So the first one is a lot. So if I just turn on kind of the, the apply button here, you can see that here we have multiple kind of presets, uh, styles or uh, filters, I guess you can call them. And then you can just uh, apply the intensity. So here this is kind of a, a day night option. And then you have multiple ones that you can use. So for example, you can use this one and you can just play around kind of uh, with uh, whatever you want to achieve through these uh, effects. Uh, now, of course, you can turn that off and then you can uh, use regular post processing if you want that. So here, as you can see, we can have the kind of automatic version or we can kind of customize that ourselves. So we can customize the exposure here. We can customize the contrast. So if you want to have kind of a harder contrast here, you can set up the highlights, the shadows, uh, the, the slope. Uh, so you can just play around with all of these settings. You have the white balance. So usually I like to have mine just a little bit warmer just to kind of make it a, a bit nicer. Uh, then we have the bloom, we have the lens flare, we have saturation. So you can actually make it black and white if you want, or you can have it really saturated. So usually I'm just going to leave that at zero. So there we go. Those are some of the effects that you can use to set up and you can just go through your renderers and just set that up. I'm just going to quickly update this scene. Okay, now once we have our kind of effects, our post processing set up, now it's time to render the actual image. Now you render the image by going here to uh, image options. So this is if you're rendering an image, if you're rendering a video or if you want to export the video, you just go here to video. It's really simple. Uh, so let's go here to image and then on the bottom, you'll see that we're going to get uh, some options. So the first one is mode. So do you want an image or you want to create a panorama? which is really cool. So you can have kind of a panoramic uh, images. You have your field of view, which is essentially your zoom. Uh, and then we have the aspect ratio. So this is basically referring to uh, what's the, well, what's, what are, what are the kind of the proportions of the image. So here you can have kind of the standard one. You can have uh, a more of a rectangular one. Perhaps if you're creating some images that are going to be used on Instagram, there you have that kind of, uh, uh, square image format and also you have some presets going from 2k 4k 6k even up to 16k which is quite amazing I'm, I'm really impressed with that uh, in this case I'm just going to keep it at 6k uh, and then yeah let's go with 6k uh, here you can further customize the uh, kind of the, the width and the height and then here you have the render option also, you have the uh, add to render queue, which is if you're rendering multiple images. So for example, here I have two scenes. If I were to set those up, I would just go here to render queue. So just gonna have it waiting there. And then when I go to bed, I can just turn on rendering and it can render as I sleep. So computer is working and D5 rendering, the render are working as I sleep and they're creating my images. In this case, let's just go with a quick render here. I'm going to specify where I want to save it, which is here. Let's just call it test render one. And then I'm going to hit save. And now the image rendering process has started. So we just have to wait for a uh, for a while just for it to finish. It really depends on the uh, kind of on your computer uh, and how fast it can work. Uh, and also, of course, on the uh, size of the image that you're rendering. So if you have a 16K image, obviously it's going to take a lot longer than a 4K image. 
Okay, so now after a few minutes, you can see that uh, the render is completed. I can just go here to uh, open folder where that is located. And then here I can see that image and I can open it up. As you can see, it looks really, really good. Let me just expand it a little bit better. There we go. So the quality is just amazing, the, the detail. So even if we just zoom in, you can see that uh, even though this was kind of uh, halfway as far as quality, uh, everything looks amazing when you zoom in the trees, uh, the, the, the rocks here. Yeah, it looks so good. So this is what you get as kind of a, just a quick a kind of a 15 minute scene as a, as a complete novice uh, and then just a few minutes of, of rendering uh, that gives you this which is I think it's really really impressive. Uh, now I also wanted to show you just uh, some renderings that were done in uh, D5 render. So I'm just going to have them in the background. You can see that just the level of quality that uh, the, the, that can be achieved with, uh, well, <laughs> investing a little more time learning and then also uh, just a little more time setting up the scene, uh, the materials, everything. It can look so realistic. It can look like an, just like an image. So even better than an image. So I'm, I'm really impressed with, uh, with the capabilities. Uh, now, speaking of uh, some just additional features that I want to go over, uh, here on their website, I'm going to link this page up in the cards above so you can check it out. Here you just have all of the features that uh, are included with D5 render. So you have real time presentation with pixel level precision. And here we have all of the kind of the, the technology that goes into that. We have ultra efficiency uh, puts rendering to full throttle, which basically means that we have that six. 16K photos and panoramas. We have 4K video rendering. Video, we have video keyframes, so you can create some really nice animations. Uh, camera control, multiple channels, render queue, adjustable preview quality, and so on. We have lights, shadows, wind, and rain. Uh, everything is customizable, so you can pretty much set up any type of scene that you uh, that you want. Uh, we have new generation PBR uh, materials, which is what gives us that next level realism in terms of materials. So you don't have to rely on uh, materials inside of Revit. You can just set up any basic material just to kind of get you there. And then inside of D5, you can replace that with some uh, kind of really, really high quality materials. We have build uh, the, the scene with everything you need. So basically, this means all of the kind of uh, tools that we have uh, in terms of adding components, adding elements to build our scene, to uh, to add the context around our building, just making it well fit in. And of course, we can explore everything as far as camera settings like depth of field. This is what gives you, you know, that blurry background that you get uh, with, with some high quality cameras and lenses. Well, uh, that's achievable with D5, camera rotation, orthographic view, and so on and so forth. So, of course, 3D assets uh, that are animated. So, we have moving cars, moving people, moving animals, uh, flying birds, and so on. So, all of this is uh, all. Of this is possible so I would recommend checking out this page as I said it's going to be linked up in the cards uh, in the cards above and also there you can get your own d5 render absolutely for free which I think it's that's that's the kind of the, the most amazing thing that we have here uh, so I hope you have enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, I would like to ask you to leave some comments in the comment section below. What do you think about D5? Would you like to? Would you like me to make some more videos in the future? Perhaps setting up some scenes, showing some workflow, uh, going into specifics, uh, perhaps exploring some additional uh, specific features. So uh, please tell me that. And I hope you have enjoyed this video. And I hope that you'll be interested, perhaps, in checking out D5 for kind of improving. The, the, the realism and presentation for your architecture uh, projects. So uh, thank you for watching and have a nice day. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.